without further ado let's start with our topic one or chapter one the construction industry cook and williams now um as i mentioned in the introduction uh, lecture is this first two units aren't that important uh, for later on although we're going to focus on it a little bit this uh, at the beginnings just to give you a bit of a background of how the construction industry works and how it um, fits into each other so the distance learning students will um, will understand much of these items because you're already in the industry so um, some of the information might be um, items that you're already familiar with okay so we're going to look at chapter one of cook and williams and this unit we're going to look at particularly just defining what the construction manager is and what the cpm is and define the construction industry okay so uh, it in, um, incorporates quite a bit of other industries as well so um, like mining for instance um, has a lot of construction in it the production industry etc etc so uh, we're going to particularly look at um, the industry structure um, okay and then some culture we're going to look at some uh, the egan report and the latham report etc which will give you a bit of background of what the construction industry looks like and the challenges that that we've been grappling with for a long period already and then we're going to look at yes the reports that i just mentioned okay so looking at the um, definitions of the construction manager um, firstly the cpa uh, sacp cmp defines a construction manager as the physical construction process where within the built environment and includes the coordination administration management of resources so you can see it's a bit more the actual construction side and then the construction manager is the point of uh, is the one point of responsibility so he's the person that manages that process of the actual construction whereas the construction project manager is um, the management of projects within the built environment from uh, conception or inception what do you want to call it um, including management of related professional services construction project um, manager is the one point responsible for this regard another definition of it to differentiate between the two is the construction manager is usually involved from stage four to six whereas the construction project manager is involved from stage one to six um, and uh, fulfills a more a consultant type of um, obligation okay and then um, the uh, definition from uh, the uh, construction regulations 2014 the construction manager means the co competent person responsible for the management of physical construction processes and coordination administration management of resources on a construction site okay so you can see it's very similar to the sacp cmp's definition okay and then obviously i just included uh, wikipedia's um, definition which will give you a bit of insight um, but the construction industry site managers often referred to as construction managers site agents or building managers are responsible for the day-to-day -day on uh, on site running of construction projects site managers are required to keep within the time scale budget um, of a project and manage any delays or problems encountered on site during the construction project also involved in the role of managing of quality uh, control health and safety checks the inspection of work carried out many site managers will be involved before site activity takes place and are responsible for managing communication between all parties within or involved on uh, in the on-site development of the project site managers are often required to deal with inquiries communication uh, with public as well typically a site manager is employed by a construction company um, contractors or civil engineering firms but often employed by local authorities to oversee refurbishment of council owned properties okay so this is just a very broad um, take and it also incorporates other areas in, um, in the world uh, so uh, you can see a construction manager um, usually starts out as a site manager 
and then progresses where he has more than one site and he has a portfolio of sites that he that he's managing um, so it's not you, you're not becoming a site manager um, as such um, but you're going to manage a whole lot of sites um, in the end so but usually you start on a site depending on the size of the project um, you can have anything from one site manager to a couple of site managers Got a seriousness of the construction regulations. So I just wanted to highlight this to you. A principal contractor must, in writing, appoint one full time competent person as a construction manager with the duty to managing all construction work on a single site, including the duty of ensuring occupational health and safety compliance. And, uh, um, and in the absence of the construction manager, an alternative must be appointed by the principal contractor. So the basic thing is you need a professional appointed to take responsibility for the project. Many um, contractors appoint external um, professionals to act as the construction manager uh, and they might have multiple projects uh, underneath their the wing. Okay, the construction project management. So um, yes, I've um, shown this in um, our first lecture as well is uh, I've just highlighted a how a typical project doesn't matter whether you're doing um, design of a new airplane or a software development or whatever. Um, this is more or less how your project looks, where you have your concept in initiation, design and development, implementation or construction, and communication and handover. Whereas the construction industry has stages one to two, which is your inception and concept feasibility. Uh, we have stages three and four, which is our design and uh, procurement stages. Then we've got our construction or implementation phase, and then we've got our closeout uh, phase, which just feeds into uh, phase one and two, or in one into one again. So whenever you're doing tenders again, you would pull out a previous project and you will start there uh, looking at um, possible rates. If you don't have any rates, you will uh, source new rates, do, do your rate buildups, etc., etc. So um, this is more or less how it works. And this is universal for whether you're a professional engineer, whether you're architect, um, QS, construction manager, um, everyone within the South African construction industry um, uses these the six uh, stages to actually go um, and do um, do their work. Okay, so we're going to look at these items. I'm not going to go in the, in um, too much depth, but basically um, I'm going to look at the outcomes of each one and give you some examples. So agreeing uh, with the client and preferences, assessing user uh, needs and and options appointment of the necessary consultants in establishing project brief, objectives, priorities, uh, constraints, assumptions, and strate strategies in cons um, consulting with the client. So the basic thing is to get a scope. Um, and that is very difficult sometimes with your client because much of the time they don't really know themselves what they're looking for. So um, standard um, services that uh, a professional provides to the client, the construction project manager. Um, you can go through these, but the outcomes from these um, sessions is basically you need a project brief, uh, project procurement policy, um, sign consultant clients agreements. Who are you going to appoint? Are you going to need an engineer, uh, mechanical, um, health and safety consultants? Do you need an architect? Do you need a, um, a IT specialist, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Project um, initiation of program. So you um, uh, get a master program that you start compiling. We'll still get to the master program. And then record all your meetings. Very important. Approval by the client. This might seem as a a given, but um, many times. Uh, you don't have signed documents that you can proceed that they have accepted the documentation that was provided to them 
and suddenly they make changes but this is not what we wanted um, we wanted a smaller building for instance or and so on and so on okay so it's good to have a, um, a document that's signed off to proceed to stage two okay um, usually in this um, stage the most important thing is to establish the scope as I said and to establish who the project team would be who are you going to appoint on the project okay and this is a typical example of uh, such a program that you can uh, develop you will see that um, you still you have the appointment of a pro, um, consultant um, detailed design okay so this is just more or less give you uh, gives you an idea this is one that we did for tender document in 2017 and it just stipulates by when the consultants should be appointed uh, when the documentation should be ready when you go out on tender um, capital approval um, many um, clients have capital approval um, stages then you go into construction you can see it's a very short uh, description of the construction it only shows that um, the length of the project and then when when the project should be closed out so many times in this early stages the client would say i want to um, occupy this building by next year february or next year july whatever and then usually you work backwards from that date and uh, compile your master program that you uh, present to your client Then we get to stage, stage two, our concept and viability. So now um, you basically um, go through the, the documentation again. You make sure what the design is and the information is expanded, etc., etc. So um, this is basically what is done in the concept and viability. And then you facilitate the approval. The main thing is now okay now we're putting meat to the bones and seeing whether the project is actually feasible will it fit within the budget is the um, uh, occupation list does it does the size of the building um, actually um, fit within the budget of the client uh, is there enough space will it fit uh, all of those items is clarified okay so very important to read through all of this and then in particular um, you have a new signed consultant uh, clients agreements this is usually people that come on board at later stages now you've established okay but we're going to have a big um, solar installation on this building okay then you might have to appoint a solar specialist maybe to assist at this early stages just giving advice etc speaking to the electrical engineer and so on then in indicative um, project documentation and construction program okay so now you expand on your program and then you get approval for your from your client again very important stage two is basically where um, the biggest divider between whether this uh, project will go on or not is um, located um, you've done the concept the architect has done the footprint of the draw, uh, of the building you can see what the um, square meter um, area is and the QS can fairly accurately um, predict or estimate what the um, final cost of the project would be um, you take into account all the fees etc and then the client has to see whether that will actually fit within his budget okay and then what i've included is just typical drawings or items that you will get to this is a project that we did there in um, blackrock and um, this was just concept i think this project has um, continued i'm not too involved in it anymore and um, this is basically what the architect produced it's just a concept of um, what uh, this project would entail this was a um, a small um, like service center of office um, spaces that was provided there was a space for like a tire um, um, dealer um, 
a radio, a little radio station, um, health and safety clothing store, etc., etc. Um, so this was just a small concept that was done. And then the architect provided us with um, with the following uh, details. You can see it's just a footprint of the drawings, all the uh, of the layout of the the site. And on the site, we could establish what the square meter areas were for everything. Um, and from this, we could develop a basic um, estimate. Okay, so this is basically just a summary of that estimate that we did. And this was also at the end of 2017. You can see it's still um, 14 um, brand VAT that we had. And then we had uh, the different areas. So we had Toyota Space, Shake PPE, uh, etc., etc. You can see that the um, the biggest cost was actually the civil works, like the roadworks that we had in here, and we had also the structured paving, which also contributed quite a lot to the project. I think in the end uh, they actually expanded this project and it, um, the last estimate that I saw it was in excess of 40 million um, so and just a bit of a background on how um, this process actually works so the client could say okay I've had, I have enough money to continue with the project please proceed to pro um, stage three okay and this is just the measurement work this was from Demex that I did it um and you can see it's basically just the square meter areas that we got um and obviously um connecting the right rates is also very very important okay so and i think i've i didn't include there's some not all of the items are included or shown here so like the road uh etc but um some sections were kept in and others were left out and so on and then we get to stage three, design development. Okay, manage and coordination of the integrate, um, integrated design uh, development. So usually in design development, what happens is, okay, the, the footprint has been established. Now we start uh, looking at what type of finishes are we going to use? Are we going to use brick and mortar? Is it going to be lightweight steel? Um, even though you've discussed it in stage two, maybe, um, it now becomes a reality. Now you start sourcing more info so that you can produce a elemental estimate uh, for your client to get a more accurate uh, design. So again, read through all of this. This is very important, not only for this module, for but also for um, working in the construction industry so that you know what the outcomes are. Okay, so again, we've got signed consultancy agreements. Anyone that comes on board again uh, or if anything has to change if the scope changed maybe or something like that detailed design documentation and program so you update your program to incorporate all of this new information maybe you've learned that the procurement um, process from the client um, has a certain amount of um, stages like um, stage one is maybe the budget approval then it has to go to someone else for approval then you can actually um, increase the accuracy of that um, update in indicative program okay the construction program so now you start um, conceptualizing your uh, program a little bit now you incorporate for instance the civil work should uh, take place first so you would um, divide your program into the large items that has to take place um, like for instance your civil works water reticulation before you actually break ground for your buildings etc etc but you will not go into details of okay now we're doing the strip footing and now the, um, you have to wait seven days and now you have to um, pour the concrete and, and build up your foundation walls etc it just um, it still is still divided into um, elements and not really items as such 
Okay, and then again, you have to record all of your meetings and then you get approval to proceed to um, stage four again. So usually it's at the end of stage three, a um, elemental estimate is produced um, so that a, con a client can take a final decision. Okay, we're going to produce the documentation. We're going to go out on tender. We want to go out on tender um, by this date because the financial year starts and ends at this date. Okay, and this is some typical drawings. You can see now, um, this is a ablution that we did, um, also in the Black, Black Rock area. And um, you can see how much detail is added. So now you start getting a, um, a bit more information on the, the amount of uh, toilets that's going to be installed, um, just the, the basic layout and um, items that the accommodation of showers, toilets, female, non-female. You're going to have a, a boiler room to service this entire um, structure um, building. Okay, so you get um, more information like that. Okay, and then um, in this instance, now you can start playing around with existing mobile. We, on this project, we had a mobile change house that was there, whether we're going to use um, the mobile um, as an additional ablution or existing and sectional completion are we going to use a certain section of the one do it in phases um, or are we going to demo, uh, demolish um, existing uh, the existing mobile and um, change houses and then just start from scratch or new to existing and demolition of existing so uh, the client can now have a look at the different options and make a decision on based on the different um, costs yeah, involved. Okay, then we get to documentation and procurement, and I think most of you will be proficient with this because this is what uh, what we've done throughout um, your undergrad. Um, degree up, up to thus far looking at the procurement process this is where all the detail and most of the work is done so that you have a contractual document and all the information available that and that can go out on tender okay and then again um, it's the process of establishing establishing and implementing procurement strategies and procedures including the preparation of necessary documentation of, for effective time use ex execution of the project. So, okay, um, if this is done run, right, your project will, um, will run smoothly, um, barring the, um, the natural hiccups that you will encounter or challenges that you will encounter. So the contractors, subcontractors and suppliers procurement strategy, are we going to do it? Uh, is it what type of contract is it going to be? JBCC, GCC, FIDIC, um, um, or whatever contract there might be. Okay, and then project procurement program is developed. So now you've got a bit more detail and now you start focusing on um, going forward from the tender process up to the completion stage. Okay, then the project tender conditions is drawn up. Uh, again, you um, take a record of all the meetings and you get approval. Make sure that all the drawings and everything is signed off by all the parties. Okay, and then I just added some um, pictures. This is basically where all the paperwork and administration comes in. Okay, and then we get to our actual implementation. And this is where uh, the construction project manager is very important. You've done all the planning and the procurement, you've gone through all the processes, and now you need to control it. So again, go through all of these items. You will see there's quite a lot um, of these items. I will also post um, the gazette on Blackboard so that you will have access to that. So please make sure that you've got that. And then the outcome at the end is a signed contractor's agreement at the start of the project, agreed contract program. Is it resource-based? Is it not resource-based, etc. 
adjustment and award uh, contractual claims, construction documentation schedule. You've got your monthly progress payment certificates, monthly project progress reports. Again, you need to record all your meetings and um, certificates and practical completion. So very important, your administration is key to all of these items. Um, simple things like the dates on when drawings are issued for if the contractor makes a mistake um, perhaps on levels you can see okay did he do it according to the drawing um, did he work on the latest drawing or not um, small items like that is very important so bookkeeping administration is extremely important on any project Okay, and then I just added what everyone thinks we do on a project and what we basically do on a project. We discuss items uh, a lot of the times uh, um, in site meetings. So, um, and you solve a lot of problems. It's actually um, quite nice to work on these projects because of the challenges that you have to face and, um, and address. And I think that's why most of us um, got into the construction industry. Okay, the main thing is uh, this slide. I just wanted to iterate how important it is to get the scope before the actual project starts, because it's a major difference between the appointment of consultants or the project team by uh, when building a ha typical house like this in comparison of doing a project of this size. So obviously um, the approach is much different and the cost and the budget will be much higher. I'm going to close out. Um, don't forget about the close out. Extremely important because um, this is where everything is signed off um, and you have made sure that everything is correct and where you get your lessons learned that you're going to implement in your next project. So you have your works completion certificate, certificate of final completion, record of all the meetings, project closeout report. Very important this project closeout report. Um, it just covers you yourself whether the client was actually happy with everything that happened, and um, that he can um, that that there won't be any comebacks later on. Okay, and then the main thing is arguing on the internet. Yeah, it's pretty much like this. Keep a paper trail. Um, try and so, um, look for solutions rather than showing out mistakes on your project. Sorry, on your project. And remember um, that your team and uh, the contractor will probably m know the most practical um, or have a lot of practical experience that you can tap into if you're the consultant. If you're a contractor, please also note that the um, consultant is, um, will give you very valuable information on exactly what the client wants. So be very mindful of each other and um, don't search for mistakes, rather search for solutions. It's just the easiest on any project. Be proactive and uh, be a team player. Okay, and then documentation is very important. Keep um, records of everything and compile your reports. Okay, then I just um, added this uh, video. Then you can have a look at it. Here's the link uh, to watch this video. So um, please be mindful of that.